requested it and then I have to click. That's what happened yesterday in a meeting is somebody requested it. So I have the button and yeah. it, all that it allows me, it's like uh, the request to edit access button. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty helpful because we weren't recording, I think it was the data science meeting yesterday until somebody right, requested me. it. Like, yeah, yeah. Shooting that out, so. Yeah, thank you, because Chan and I both forgot. Yeah, I forgot too. I come in with the button to remember and I forgot, so. <laughs> well, welcome the, the three of us to the metrics development meeting. Um, so this is a very lightly attended group, um, but we all know this. So um, I'm going to share my screen and make a some sort of suggestion. So I don't have this fully sorted out, but it's this radical idea right here. So first, Sean, you have to answer whether or not you're a napper or not. A napper? Uh -huh. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um... I need to answer that. One who takes naps. Yes. <laughs> okay, I would say no, but Kate says I do. So I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to say yes. So because... you nap, but you're in, you're in denial. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's. <laughs> Oops. When I was a kid, my, my grandfather used to say that. Like, anytime people would be like, you were asleep, he'd be like, no, I was reading. He would, that was always his answer. And it doesn't yep. matter. The newspaper is literally on his face because he he's is not reading for an hour. But he, he's like, no, no, I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't admit wouldn't admit the naps. It's, it's no, a I, pride thing. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, when my oldest daughter was young, uh, anytime you ask her if she's tired, the answer is no, like forever. It's like, I'm never tired. Okay. So bad. Here's my radical idea. So right now... We have obviously a variety of metrics and I've been, I actually have been going through the metrics, just kind of doing the audit, you know, kind of taking a look as to whether or not things like if they're in the right template, it's actually a sheet here, um, whether or not like they're candidates for metric models. So I've been kind of working my way through this. And one of the things that, that I just continue to see as I go through the metrics is the section, which is implementation and below is very like it's just super inconsistent across the metrics because we have so many optional fields in there and so it creates a lot of like just really odd authorship on our metrics not not that any of it's wrong it just it's really inconsistent across our metrics so that's so, kind of one of the things that i'm observing so I would say that consistency is something we should aspire to. I'm that's exactly where I'm going. So that the consistency is something that we should aspire to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, to me, it just it makes a lot of sense. And there are some that are they're very long here at the end. And there's just a lot of content in there. And I'm just I'm not convinced that people really spend the time going through there. But what I do think is that people do look at the metrics that we have as definitions to kind of get themselves oriented. You know, like what, you know, maybe not contributors, but if we talk about like bot activity, mm -hmm. I think just give people a sense of, this is actually a pretty nicely designed one, but just give people a sense of kind of what we're talking about when it comes to bot activity. You know, just a yeah. definition. And our metrics at this point are really becoming very atomic pieces of information. You know what I mean? We don't, like we point people to metric models more often, or we point, point people to the practitioner guides as they're being developed. It's kind of ways to think about um, open source community health. So again, I'm not, this is very, very early. So what I'm suggesting is that we actually version three of the yeah, metrics. You're on, John, I'm going to mute you. Can you mute, John? John, John, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So, and I don't have, I'm not logged in. Okay. Sean, <laughs> his headphones are what? <laughs> Dude. Uh, all right, whatever. We'll just talk over. All right. All right. That sounds, uh, thank you. Yeah. And then will this occur? <laughs> All right, great, thank you. <laughs> Bye.
<laughs> you, you didn't move. You didn't mute. Sorry, you I took your I, headphones off, so we had no way to tell you to mute. And you're and the I'm only not, person. You're the only one. People. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It was my ISP telling me they're going to bounce my internet in 15 minutes. So. Oh, okay. So we should finish the meeting uh, in 15 minutes. If I disappear, you know why. What, why are they going to do that? They did not explain why. They just. <laughs> just I appreciate the heads up. I mean, I think that's pretty thoughtful. Like an actual person called me. We're going to, okay. Anyway, <clears throat> so my, the radical idea is to do a version three on the metrics. So I don't know if this is perfect by any means, but one is to remove the question. We get really hung up on the question and it's, so you can tell me I'm crazy. Okay. So that was one is to remove the question. Well, what I would say is people do really get the goal question metric framework and we've kind of proselytized that a lot. So I'm not against refining what we present in the metric. I just think we should be clear about that we're not giving up goal question metric because I think people do like that. I, I actually think that the question is really useful. That's often the thing that I use in the metric. Yeah, no the problem. And we, and we, and have, we have them in all of the metrics, so that's an easy thing to keep. Well, and people, but I'm, people I'm often... a big plus one to simplifying and maybe getting rid of some of those other sections. Okay, so fair and also. Yeah, on just the same not page the there. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Um, the description and objective, as we have them often written, they overlap a lot. Mm -hmm. And we have, yeah. whenever we're authoring these, we do have a really hard time. Like, is this a sentence that goes in the description? You're nodding, so I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. My suggestion is we just combine these into a section called description. I yeah. think that's useful. Yeah have two and then i did some of them are very long like this one again if i was to say like bot activities are pretty nicely constructed metric that we have but sometimes our objectives are <laughs> so long mm -hmm. yeah uh let's see oh it's this one i think Maybe this one. like look at that mm -hmm. i mean it's just so much and so like if we just get into description, so I had just picked some arbitrary, like we can't exceed five sentences. I think I, I will say I believe it is the most. The metrics we developed first are the ones that have the more detailed description at the bottom, fairly consistently because we did attend to those sections more at the beginning. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, yes, well, I, yes, that's fine. So I am suggesting that we merge description and objective. And again, like questions mm -hmm. that you can push back. And then we, we kind of set some cap as to how long this description should be, whether it's five sentences or four rows, or I don't care what it is, but just that we can't go on forever. We need to be concise <laughs> in our words <laughs> to describe. Should not but, sounds more friendly than cannot, but. Right. Well, and I, I would avoid sentences because I am sort right. of mean of, you know, just like tacking a whole bunch of things together into one gigantic complex sentence. <laughs> a bunch of conjunctions. Um, <laughs> which you know, because I've, I've often seen you um, edit some of my sentences to be oh. multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, should we say like a word count? I'm just, it's just a suggestion yeah. to try to bound things. I mean, 200 words or something. Yeah, I would I would use word count. I think that's. Um... People can be very rich with their words, you know what I mean? And if you push people to be thoughtful, you can get the point across quite nicely. And sometimes I feel that mm, not that one, this one in particular, <laughs> there are a number like this that we just kind of captured all the things <laughs> and we just kind of put it all in there. All right. And of course, I would circulate this kind of like the way that you've been circulating things done with renaming bus factor. You know what I mean? The decision won't just be here. But Fair enough. This. Okay, um, filters. Filters show up and they're actually, they show up quite a bit and they're used pretty often in all of our metrics. So I, I it, for a while, I was like, maybe we'd get rid of filters, but I think they're actually, they help kind of frame the way you could think about the metric. 
So instead of though having it as a subsection under implementation, it would be its top level heading called filters. So you'd have this question, a description, and then filters would be a top level heading on it. Sean, what do you think? As an optional heading or a... Nope. Well, I mean, it okay. could be. It, it, many of them have filters I'm, and they're pretty... That does, yeah, no, it's not material to whether or not I think moving it up makes sense. I think it does. Okay. Um, we struggled for a long time, you may recall, around what is a filter compared with a parameter. I still think that's not extremely clear to most consumers of the metrics for what that's worth. I don't know how to fix that. Okay. Because I think the words mean different things. Okay. Well, I wonder do filters apply as well when you're looking at um, some of the, like the, the DEI metrics, some of the maybe more survey based? metrics take a look so I'm randomly picking family friendliness here which is a metric we have <coughs> so here we just don't have them at all yeah so i mean it could be an optional top level heading i'm okay with that some of them have it like uh event demographics has a Does filter it it? okay I just want to make sure that we don't pick a section that's not used, that's only used for with the trace data metric. Gotcha. But not diversity access tickets doesn't have it. It has data collection strategy. Yeah, filter makes less sense when it's not trace based. Yeah. And I do feel like so this is this is what I'm struggling with a little bit is that the the trace data metrics are very different than the mm -hmm. survey based metrics. And I do feel like some of these data collection strategies are useful um, with like, you know, example survey questions. Agreed. Whereas I, I feel like some, some of the, so I feel like the filters bit is useful for um, some of the trace data, but the other implementation stuff I think is not that useful. Um, whereas in some of these metrics, the data collection strategies are a little is more useful. kind of critical. So is there They're central? A, yeah. Point well taken. Um, so is there kind of a, a better term here that would be like filter or data collection strategy? <laughs> yeah, those are not two, two phrases or words that really go together, but, but like a, <laughs> an overarching, you know, like. We should we should think about that. I am I am really bad at naming things. I have actually so this is just a total side note. Um, Chat GPT is way better than I am at naming podcasts. <laughs> I can drop the show notes in to Chat GPT and get a name that sounds reasonable. Paul Barr gave me that idea because he did it with one of our one of our podcasts. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I've been is reluctant to use. Chat GPT is better at naming than Don is, is what I'm yeah. saying. I've really been reluctant to use Chat GPT for anything at all. So Yeah, me too. I haven't used it for really anything. And it wasn't until Paul used it um, on one of the podcasts recently because we couldn't come up with a name and it just didn't make any sense. And he he dropped in Chat GPT and gave us 10 options and and we combined a couple. And, and like I never take the like one as is. It's always like I'm gonna take that and then you know, change change this word or or two, but but it it is actually reasonably good at naming stuff. That's the only use I found for it. I have to admit. Somebody drop ways to think about data. <laughs> hmm. Like a, a header like that. I'm not about about, but. Something like that, just the header. Well, we'll socialize it and see what people think. Yeah, but, and then, because I agree with you. For a while, I was like, like the data collection strategy sometimes when it's the trace data metrics, it's not super helpful because it's hard to keep up with the, um, like, different schemas that might change or the different um, dashboards that might change. It's just, they're always a little bit behind. And so it's hard to, 
but like this type of oh not that one sorry um the one like these super helpful i agree and i don't want to just throw away survey questions on like how to think about demographics or how to think about whatever it might be so i'm with you <clears throat> i understand your point i right. wonder yeah. um i wonder actually because if you go back to that metric we were just looking at this one uh, yeah scroll down are there any visualizations at all no. i wonder if in the some of these almost like the the survey questions and things almost take the place of some of the visualizations i don't know yeah I, maybe I, we need different templates for qualitative versus quantitative metrics Sorry, now I'm making this more complicated and your whole purpose was to simplify. I'm trying to get rid of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, maybe I don't like it. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the visualizations, let me, let's just. Yeah, let's keep going, sorry. We'll keep it, we'll keep it on there. Um, the visualizations, <clears throat> like this is, this is from the um, Kubernetes, the dev stats thing. I'm like, this is, it's pretty nice you know, when, when we can see it. Um, <clears throat> there are times when like Augur can provide a visualization, but I don't think any of our metrics have been updated with say eight knot visualizations, which would probably be the visualization that we would want. Yep, they would be. Yep, and then um, same with probably like the Baturgia UIs, like I would imagine those change too. So all of these pictures, this one actually still looks pretty similar to what they have at DevStats, but I would imagine the visualizations are always kind of on a, or they have a potential to be on a lag mm -hmm. with what the software is actually doing. Um, so I, I struggle with this one a little bit because they are nice to, to give people just that. Um, but I do have a concern that they lag. Yeah. I love the visualizations though. And I frequently just, I'll, I'll be honest, like for the, um, uh, the insight guides, the practitioner guides, a lot of times I grab the visualization from the metric okay. and use that. Okay. Because generally we picked it for a reason and it's generally a pretty good example of, of the metric. So I, I tend to use those quite, quite heavily. No problem. And I do think that they really do give people a sense for for what the metric means. I, I agree. Like looking at this is that actually helps in the bot sense here. Yeah. Okay, I can actually kind of get a sense of what they're talking about. Um, I'm happy to, to leave them, the ones that are there, not a problem at all. Um, but I do, I think, you know, we may want to make this a top level heading as well. We just have these top level headings. We just have a question, a description, how to think about the data, the visualization. I wonder if, um, yeah, I don't know who would have time to do this or the skills to do this, but you know, maybe, maybe going through the metrics and yeah, and and highlighting the ones that maybe need the visualizations updated. We could do that. Maybe um, I could let's do this as like a second ride. I'm Actually, what I'm proposing here is actually fairly easy with PRs for me, not the visualization updated. Yeah. Maybe a second round to update. Yeah, um, so we need somebody that's familiar with like the uh, with with eight knot or Grimoire Lab to go through and look at the visualizations and see if they're still still up to date. When we or, go, yeah, go ahead, Sean. Or to simply. Um, Put them in there if they're not yeah. up to date. Like it doesn't take a ton of skill to do copy paste off of the Eight Nut website or Grimoire Lab website. No, it's, it's a matter of knowing where to look. So people who yeah. aren't with Eight Nut aren't going to know that it has a visualization for X. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's fair. I don't my think. It will, is, yeah. So my point is, the people who could do this are already so overloaded that they can't take on additional work because it's like you and Cali and maybe like. Isaac or yeah. quickly. Like if we quickly. So like as an example, Sean, is there a a visualization in eight knot 
that shows bot activity? Actually, bot activity is a thing that gets excluded from 8 not. I don't think there's a bot activity visualization that's okay. specific. You, I don't think Grimoire Labs does either. It's something, it's something we filter out to look yeah, at. Yeah, you toggled it. It gets toggled on and off, Fair enough. basically. Okay. It's not a thing you see. OK. No. Be OK. Yeah. But like these kinds of things, like this is contributors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's out of date. There's an eight nod visualization for that one now. Yes. So this yeah. is also the, a lot of the, the visualizations we have from Augur were just from like Jupyter notebooks and things. Well, that's from five years ago. That was in our JavaScript front end, but that front end doesn't exist <laughs> anymore because maintaining node projects is for fools. <laughs> oh, so but or people so, with deep pockets. <laughs> so this is where I do like. Um, like I hear you in the back of my mind, Don. Like, um, remember how I was like I was going to write the the to do OSPO book chapter and point to the practitioner guides. But like, why don't you think about just pointing to the page as opposed to the guides because those mm -hmm. links might change. So, I just like I, what I would love to do is get these metrics to be like done <laughs> as a one time thing, and we don't have to worry about lag. Because this does get us a little bit into trouble sometime in, in the lag with these visualizations. If it's worth it, it's no problem. Yeah, but, but I think um, I think the visualizations are 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 worth it, and I think okay. the lag is really. I think it's mostly not a big deal because it's not okay. like that visualization is no longer applicable. It still applies. You could still use something like that for a visualization. That's it's fair. just that now we have something better that it would be nice to replace it with. Okay. So I think it's less about lag and just more about sort of continuous improvement. Okay. So then yeah. maybe to that end. So Sean, like as an example in eight knot, mm -hmm. like how hard would it be for somebody who is not very familiar with the interface to track down something like this? I, would, I mean, I think it takes a person less than three minutes to click on every screen and see what's there. Um, and we could actually provide a job aid that would list what's there and describe each visualization. Like we could just put that in a spreadsheet. In fact, that probably exists somewhere. This seems like it might, if it's not terribly complex to track these down, it might be a nice job for a community member. Who's mm -hmm. I agree. Well, yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. I'm all okay with that. All right. Um, there is this section that I'm going to propose we remove. It's just, there's just no, never any, it's always this. <laughs> it always <laughs> just looks like that. <laughs> so it's not a knock on the software. It doesn't. Yeah, I yeah. think it's not, it's repetitive for sure. It's always those two. I I, I think in them stats, sometimes we yeah. like kibble, I think, you know, mm -hmm. but. I mean, I think yeah. it's better if we, if you can scroll up, do, the, do these visualizations have, no. It's better if we attribute the visualizations. Could. To I was thinking the same thing. We could um, just... Which we've done in some of the metrics, <laughs> yes. one. but others, it says, you know, this, you know, generated by Augur, or generated by yes. Google, something. Yeah. Agreed. So that was kind of my thought that we could just put it as part of the, hey, Kevin, that we could just put it as part of the, um, like that, <laughs> you know, like the figure narrative, yeah. you know. Okay. So, Okay, this is helpful, thank you. Um, so we have references as a section, which is all good. 
Um, there are times when we do this, where we reference other metrics. There are times where we reference papers or blog posts. And they seem different to me. And my recommendation is that if we have references, it's only to papers or posts, not other metrics. To avoid the circular, yeah, to avoid circularity. Is that what you're thinking? Just when I think of references, it's like, what did we use to help inform? Like these are like childcare conferences. Like these are references that actually point out the work that somebody has done. Not saying our metrics are not work. Mm -hmm. but just external resources that we have to me. Anyway, that was a thought. I don't know what you think about that. Sean, you're still online. You haven't gotten kicked out yet. No, no, it's promise, promises. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a thought? No, <laughs> nothing. No. <laughs> no, All right. I mean, I, What's that? Yeah, I, I agree. We should, we should just, we shouldn't link to related metrics. I think just like blog posts and okay. papers and things make sense. Okay. And I do like the idea of, of simplifying it. I think we need a little, a little more. Okay. A little and more work on it, maybe. Contributors would stay for the metrics that have contributors. That's a nice section to me. So, um, Kevin, just getting you up to speed really quickly. Um, I was just talking about kind of a version three on the metrics template in an effort to simplify things. And you can kind of see, and definitely we won't make this decision here. We'll continue to circulate this idea, but this is kind of the structure, the proposed structure, just to kind of reduce text. So it's the question would stay the description and objective sections would merge and really not to exceed 200 words. Perhaps another section, which is just called how to think about the data. That was kind of the old implementation section. Data collection strategies. This is really for surveys. Your views, the filters are really for quantitative data. The visualizations would stay but move to a top level heading. And we would try to encourage a community member to update as needed. We'd remove tools providing the metric because that just is often repeated. References would be only papers or posts and then keep the contributor section, so. Uh, for the references, does that include like inline citations to metrics? Yeah, the paper uh, I don't or throughout I, the document. I don't know. So that's a good question. So it's one. Le it would be one less thing to manage or have to come back and re-edit. Because right now, if we if we link to a metric that exists, if we go back in and edit that metric, uh, or change the name, or talk about the metric in a certain way. Yeah. Uh, the, the metrics can become kind of stale or outdated. So removing specific references might be a good inline, specific inline references might be a good idea, but it, it will make the, uh, in the cases where we do have to mention other metrics, it will make that kind of more kind of an abstract mention, right? Rather than our... I'm trying to find one that has like an inline. You're talking like we would just have the link like right there. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to know if, like this one right here. Yes. So would you? What was the proposal? Well, so the, the question is: Are we? Are we? Would we remove those inline references, or would we try I, to keep them? I was, at least on my first thought, it was to keep that, but just like not have it down here. Okay. I was just I was curious because they they do add complexity, yeah. Uh, and I there's there's reasons to keep them, but there 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 would be reasons to maybe think about removing them as well. Uh, I'm fine either way. I was just I just wasn't okay. sure what we were talking okay. about. 
I, I would tend, yeah, I would tend to leave them there because I do think that there there are a lot of cases where things like the description is, you know, the um, two metrics that are really similar. Sometimes we link to the other ones so that people know which one that they're going to, for example. I'm trying to remember, I saw an example of that one recently. So I think it's fine to link to them in line. I know it increases the complexity and we should probably avoid it where we can, but I don't think it belongs in the references. Okay, maybe not avoid it, but only maybe use it when we need to use yes. it and not uh, not force the issue if uh, if it's not necessary. Yeah, so. exactly. Looks okay. like Sean's internet went out. That's it. Sean in actually twenty minutes out. instead of fifteen, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what was the what was the other thing about description and objectives? To merge them and just call it description. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I think I think that that's I was, a, I was skeptical. Uh, <laughs> are you sure? Uh -huh. <laughs> so they they really they really are two things, right? So the the description should be a very explicit statement of what the metric is measuring, and then the objective is why we want to measure it, right? So and I, and I know there's. When we create these metrics, there's often a lot of confusion about those. That's yeah. one. It's a comment that I will pull up that I will say quite often is that what people write in the description actually belongs in the objective, and we really just need one to two sentences that explicitly tell us what we're measuring in the description. Uh, we could merge them together, but I but I do think we still need those. We need those two different things, even okay. if it's in the yeah. same section. Yeah. So maybe like instead of just calling it. Maybe we think of a new header for this. And that, you know, like um in the metrics model, we've had that, you know, why it matters. Yeah. What are we measuring? Yeah. Is yeah, the... it's kind of kind of an overview. Like the description and the objectives provide sort of an overview of the metric. I don't know, something similar to that might be a good. I think of it as a what are we measuring and why are we measuring it? Right. The description for me is the what are we measuring, and the objective is the why are we measuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm perfectly fine with long headers that say like what are we measuring and why are we measuring it. That's a completely acceptable, I think, in these documents. So, and yeah, on the example that we have here, that first sentence is an objective. Right, family, family friendly you know, set of events can lower the barrier for. Oh, so, so that's that's why we would want to measure it. It's not it's not what we're measuring, right? And this is I think why we need to combine it because people are confused oh. about which one belongs where. They they kind of get both pieces, so we usually mm -hmm. end up with both of the what and the why in the description and or, and or objectives. But it feels like people don't know where to put the bits of it. Yeah, so maybe, maybe if we're just maybe if we're explicit about it, maybe it is one section, but the guidance that we have is a uh, what are we measuring and why are we measuring? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, like subheadings, right? I am okay with literally that heading. <laughs> like it's <laughs> helpful when people read it. And, clear. Yeah, it's just clear and it says what it says, mm -hmm. and then you read the section knowing that that's what you're getting. So I'm completely fine with that. And then we did. I I tried to add this. Do you see that? I don't know if you see my screen, but should not exceed. Yeah words because there are some like that one yeah you know i mean we could we could on the objectives we could provide guidance as well that uh we put it in list form right and the list the list shouldn't have more than so many lines or uh because there are some that have lists and there are some that are paragraphs yeah there are some that are multiple paragraphs uh, keep in yeah. mind in that objective section, we also want to make sure that one of those objectives, at the very least, one of those objectives mentions diversity and inclusion. Um, yeah, if applicable. I saw there were a few that didn't have it, but yep. Yeah, if if applicable, once again. Yep. It, we don't need we don't need to force it if it's not there. <laughs> but if but if it's there, we we need we should uh it should be. All yeah, of them. we should have, we should consider diversity and inclusion. Of course, at yep. least one instance of a diversity and inclusion for all of the objectives, if, yep. if it exists. Yep. And uh, I, I think that 
I think the that guidance was in the template at one time. It is. It, it still is there. I think it's still there. Yeah. Oh, Logan, I like sticking to, to words because uh, people can make bullet points really long. Um, so I think, so this is a discussion we had, Kevin, before you joined, is that mm -hmm. I am sort of queen of really, really long sentences. And so if you tell me that something has to be less than this number of sentences, I'm just going to put some ands and buts and howevers and semicolons and, and just do my thing. Um, so that, that's my fear is if we don't, if we don't give people something that has to constrain them, um, mm -hmm. that they'll get creative. Yeah, I, I'm not, okay saying no lists if, if we wanted to go that route. Uh, no, I'm just saying like 200 words, whether it's in a list oh. or not in a list. But if you tell people a list has to have three points, those could be three words or three gigantic run-on complex sentences. Right, right. Yeah. So how do you want me to phrase that? Well, if the whole thing can't exceed 200 words, you can yes. say something like objectives are typically about three points. Okay. Uh, or about three, you know, whatever. And and we're not gonna be like the police. Like if it makes if it makes sense for something to go a little bit over two hundred words, it's not like it's not like we're gonna be like, no, sorry. No, but it, yeah, no, I agree. It's <laughs> most these are guide, these are guidelines. Yeah. These are, Point being, say say what you need to say and be done saying it yeah. <laughs> in a few words. Um, okay. And so then, Kevin, this one of the reasons that I'm bringing this up too is I've been kind of I've continued to be doing the audit on the metrics, and the sections, you know, that whole implementation section. It's really highly variable. I'm shaking my head. Yes, you can't see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just all over the place. So yeah, I, I agree. I, I had a, a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a month ago, I, I had audited uh, four or five of them as well. Uh, we're still we're still kind of all over the place. I don't know if we ever made a full pass the last time we had changed the template to update update them. I think there at the time, I think we were we were doing it by working group. Yeah, and some of the working groups were less active than others. Yep. So, uh, like evolution, I don't know. I don't know if any of those ever got updated. No, in fact, I saw. Uh, remember the old queries? Yeah, the, the like one still has the query in it. Yeah, so that's like from six, eight years ago. Because <laughs> it's like one of the first ones ever. So, yeah, um, there's there are some metrics that we have defined that I find to be kind of problematic. Uh, that kind of that I think they need attention. Well, um, I, I agree. So, so part of that, I think maybe at least from my perspective, was the attention. The attention was to just we just need to get. They just need less in them. People go to the metrics just to understand what the concept is. Yeah, yeah. I think they need to be more explicit, and they they need to be explicit at a higher level. Yeah, because they're not going to this document to like actually implement the metric. No. <laughs> The, 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 no. They don't provide enough detail to do that anyway. We really, we just need to have an idea of what it is we're we're measuring when we say family friendliness, and the reason that it's important, which is this, and then and then maybe point to, point to some. Uh, uh, do we? So then, well, then there were two things. So one, the one thing that does appear to be pretty helpful mm -hmm. on the quantitative ones are that filter section right it does give people i pull one up somewhere around here but it does seem to give people a sense of here's a good one this is a nice metric actually just kind of how to think about the metric i think it helps locate people a little bit and a lot of these sections are written just like this when yeah, i was yeah the, I, li I like yeah it's basically the uh and those those filters are usually kind of they're short atomic sweet. atomic metrics or yep. kind of specific ways of thinking about a uh, uh, something that we can actually grab from yeah or get yeah or, and they uh, help yeah. describe this in a little bit more detail you know what I mean yeah. it is, I so like I, that I I also like removing the uh, pointers to specific tools that may be using it I think well, that's a little so redundant because it's all just auger 
or yeah, that's, that, right? Yeah, ta-da, okay. like, remove tools providing metric. <laughs> if we were to, if we were to replace that with something, we could uh, put a link to models that implement this metric. Uh, but once again, that that's a that would be an area that we would have to constantly update. Yeah, so which maybe I'm that's not even worth trying to stop out. that. Yeah, maybe have we have we have we can have point the other direction. We can point from models to the metric rather than from metric to the models. But. So then, and then the only other thing that was really helpful, and Don pointed this out, was you know for a lot of these like um, the like say the DEI metrics, we have these. Yeah which is really helpful just to get people to think about like the questions they could ask. For me, I think that's the same thing as the filters. Exactly. You got yeah. it. It's just, and so like a new section called like how to think about the data. Right. Like that. Yeah. And it's, it, it either, either, either has filters or it has data collection strategies in it, depending on if it's a qualitative or a, got it. a quantitative. Uh, yep. That's a metric. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like that. Tra trace data versus survey data. Yep. And then visualizations, we talked about this one a little bit. Um, so like very nice visualization from dev stats. The point was that it, the point that I had raised is that visualizations have a tendency of lagging a little bit because they can be old. Yeah. Like this, you know what I mean? 2018. I think this is another one where we try to force the issue as well where sometimes we will put images in that aren't necessarily uh, in, indicative exactly. of what the metric yeah. is. Right? So there, there are some images that we've used, uh, we've duplicated them in in, in a couple different metrics uh, because they they seem like they're appropriate, but uh, when we look at them, they're, they're not quite uh, what the metric is describing. So we, that's fair. And so Dawn said that she really does like the visualizations and that there's something that she uses pretty regularly when doing, say, this, those practitioner guides, you know? And so the suggestion is to make visualizations a top level heading, but really reach out to the community to ask people to update them. And they we, could, it could be your uh, point as well, like really thinking about the visualizations that are appropriate here. Is there a is there a standardized way of thinking about those visualizations where maybe we're creating all of the visualizations using one tool? That uh, or... did not come up. So the I... that probably wouldn't go no, well. Not possible. No, that that, that would cause that would cause a, mm -hmm. a little flame war, I think, between the Augur and Grimoire Lab team. Okay, but we can we have a visualization from both. Could we have yeah, I think when, when we can, I think that's one the way from, we should from do it. From Gamora Lab. Yep. Uh, and so, so we just asked a community member to go use the different like online solutions from Gamora Lab. You know, the I guess, Gamora Lab and uh, so the, the last visualization we had grabbed, we grabbed it from K8 Stats. That right? one, so, yeah. which which is external, right? Even if even if we just had the if we just said, hey, we're only going to provide visualizations if it's Augur or Grimoire Lab, or both, that would create uh, some standardization in the, in the way we were doing it. Because uh, we do, we do occasionally, we'll go out and get a visualization from yeah. K8 stats, or well, we'll sure. get a visualization from uh, another tool that exists. Yeah, we, yeah which is completely- yeah. I think I think we have a preference for Augur and Grimoire Lab. And uh -huh. in the case of Augur and Grimoire Lab, none of them do like this kind of bot visualizations we don't have one from Augur or Grimoire Lab it's like a filter where you filter basically mm -hmm. filter it in or out and so it's not really they yeah. don't focus on it so I think that's why we we pulled this from DevStats which is fine I'm just I'm just if we if we're wanting to standardize it or if we're wanting to kind of put some controls on what those images the images that we embed are I think those are some things to think about where we get those images how fresh those images are uh, yeah, we would ask a community member to try to do some updating on that freshness and appropriateness. Uh -huh. And that would maybe occur after I had done some of this work above. For the image citation, maybe we ask them to put a date pulled. Oh, we could. In the image citation. Mm -hmm. Or even just to add an image citation because we don't actually have that on a lot of them. Uh, they are supposed to. I think the, the they, are says to. they are supposed to. So. 
So the, tool folks, the, the older ones don't um, have yeah. even the tool. I don't even know other well, like than the, just by looking at it, I can generally tell. Like this, um, you can figure it out, but this yeah. doesn't say it. Yeah, because the active contributor is the Scrimar lab. I'm going to guess the new contributors and the one above were Augur. This is Grimoire no, Lab. No, that's Grimoire Lab, but I mean the one the one above that, number yeah. one. I yeah, so if, if we're removing the tools, I think it, it would be nice to have the visualization, have the citation to the tool and the time that it was yep. extracted. I suppose okay. would be yeah. the way we do it. That's good. All right, we're, we're at time. I'll just finish this thought, Kevin. So yes, we agree that remove tools providing the metric. That is meaningless. References would only be to papers or posts, and we keep the contributor section. So like academic papers and blogs, is that what we're yeah. talking about? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So like just things that have informed our thinking here. Okay. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, maybe specific, maybe specific guidance on that. Uh, white papers, academic papers, white papers. Yeah, that's Industry fine. white yep. papers and blog posts. I mean, I would say that it's, um, I would maybe not not give a laundry list of the types of things. I would maybe say that it's um, resources. Mm -hmm. They're like resources that were used in the development of the metric. Um, what are we trying to exclude here? Metrics, other metrics. metrics. Other metrics, okay, so, okay. Yeah. So it's like, we want we want things that point you to information. Other metrics developed by us or other metrics in general? Developed by us. Okay. So just, so maybe this is external references. We just call it external yeah. references or external resources. But they could be chaos blog posts. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to leave it in there for now because we're out of time. But how about, how about we just have... It just says no, no metrics, no chaos. That would metrics. be easiest. <laughs> just put no <laughs> chaos metrics, no chaos models. Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I, this is a good, thank you for at least entertaining me to walk through this. I know this will be a considerable amount of work, but the intention is to actually make these things smaller. <laughs> I'm, I'm, happy, no, I think, I'm happy I think to pick good. up a few of these to audit uh, okay. in the future as well. Uh, I, I've done them in the past. I can okay. Can't do them all at once, but I can. I can help plug a few. Okay. I mean, the trickiest thing is going to be that merging of the um, the description and objective sections. You know. Yeah. It'll just take a. That's just editing, copy editing. Just take a little bit of time. Okay. Um, I'll start circulating this in the community call, just so people know what's up, what's what, and we'll talk about it probably for about a month. You know what I mean? Just to give people feedback or time to, to comment on this. Okay. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.